We are talking lots of budget-friendly outdoor ideas today from Dollar Tree DIYs to thrift store and flea market flips that will transform your outdoor space. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Shannon from the DailyDIYer.com. Now let's start with some of these awesome Dollar Tree solar light ideas. This first idea is so easy and so pretty too. All you need is your solar light, some glass beads, and some super glue. All can be found at Dollar Tree. And we're gonna start adding some glue to the back of those glass beads. It doesn't hurt to add a little bit of hot glue in there with some super glue to attach your glass beads onto the plastic clear part of your solar light, just working our way around, starting at the top and then moving our way down the rest of the way on the solar light. So the super glue is actually going to hold Hold up and withstand the elements much better than the hot glue but it takes a little bit longer for that super glue to dry so the hot glue actually sets up more quickly for us so we can get through this project in a snap so isn't that a fun way to dress up these average looking solar lights very pretty during the daytime as the sun will bounce off the colored glass but then of course at nighttime when the sun goes down and it gets dark that solar light will pop on and then you have really pretty colors to your solar lights you can see i did a little bit of a variety here with the different colors to see what it would look like and change it up a bit this is one of the coolest solar lights that I've ever seen, and I can't believe these are a Dollar Tree for only $1.25 each. They kind of look like little lanterns, but they have that flickering flame effect in them. So pretty, and it's so easy. You can do these in a couple different ways. You can put them down into a vase or some kind of container that'll hold them up if you want them on a table. Very cute, kind of makes for a romantic flickering ambiance, or of course you can use them to light your path ways to. So this technically isn't a solar light, but it is another light the Dollar Tree carries that are really fun and they are hanging lights. I love the little fairy lights that are inside the light bulb and they are battery powered. So you just flip the little switch on the top to turn it off and on. And another cute way to dress these up is just like the first project we did, gluing on some of those glass beads that are also from Dollar Tree around the bottom. I just had a few left and unfortunately I didn't have quite enough after our projects to cover this, but obviously you'd want to cover the entire light bulb, which will give them a fun and pretty little glow. Obviously, Dollar Tree has a ton of different planters to choose from, and I love this one that has a little cutout on the bottom. So it's actually made so you can put it onto your railing. So this is our front porch. I just took this little planter, put it over the railing, and you can use this in a couple different ways. Obviously, you can use it as a planter, or you can add ice into it and make it a little cooler. So perfect for parties. But another idea here is you could put this on a poolside railing, and you could put bug spray and sunscreen in it to keep that kind of thing handy. Use it for a party and put chips and um, goodies in there. So keep those ideas in mind the next time you see those planters at Dollar Tree. Another great outdoor item that Dollar Tree carries are these little water globes. So if you're like me and you have a hard time remembering to water your plants, this kind of gives you a little bit of a day's um, leeway, or if you're going to be gone for the day, this is a great way to keep your plants watered. You just fill them with water and then you stick them down into the soil of your plant and it keeps everything nice and hydrated for you at least for a day. Now I will say these can, these commenters say that they've actually burned holes into wood from the sun and the magnetic effect. So keep these out of the sun and it will actually last longer too that way so that the water doesn't just evaporate. This is another awesome Dollar Tree find that I had to give a try. They are citronella scented incense sticks. So they're actually made to keep the bugs away. And we live in the Midwest, so we have plenty of bugs during the summertime. Anything we can do to keep the bugs away, I am all for. So these come in a pack of six. Here's a fun little tip and trick for you. If you take a small terracotta pot, this is also from Dollar Tree, flip it upside down and you have an instant incense holder. So you just stick the stick right down into the small hole 
And then you can even put this into a bigger pot. I have this cute elephant one that my mom gave me to dress it up a little bit. Don't use a plastic pot. Still recommend a, a terracotta pot since we are gonna be lighting these incense. You just take a lighter, light it, and as soon as it turns into a flame, you'll immediately blow the flame out. And that is what's gonna release all of the smoke and the incense and the citronella that is gonna keep those bugs away. Here's another great way to keep the bugs at bay. You can find these floating candles at Dollar Tree as well as these bubble glass vases. You're gonna fill it a little bit more than halfway up with water and then grab out some essential oils. Specifically, I'm using lemon and lime here, which are known to keep the bugs at bay. So adding a few drops to the water and then you can also add a sprig of rosemary in there. Bugs also don't like that. And this combination will hopefully keep you from getting bug bites or bugs flying around you. And then you just take your floating candle, plop it down into the water and light it. So not only is this a really pretty addition to your outdoor space, but it's also doing double duty, keeping the bugs away. This is a unique way to use pool noodles and luckily Dollar Tree has those. We're also gonna grab another unique item, a broom handle. We're gonna make a little squeegee out of this pool noodle. So you're gonna take it, we're gonna cut it in half so it's not quite so long. Remove that sticker off there and then we're gonna cut a slit in the top. So basically taking our knife and cutting an X mark right in the middle. Then we're gonna need some super glue. We're gonna take that, put it down into that X marked hole. Lots and lots of good super glue down in there. And then we're gonna twist our broom handle right into that hole. Doesn't hurt to add a little extra super glue to the twisty part of the broom stick as well. Kind of twist it in there. Let it set for a good hour or so so it's good and set up before taking it outside. And you can use it on your patio to get rid of any excess or standing water. Laundry baskets are plastic and great to use outside. This one here I was using as a laundry basket and unfortunately the bottom got a hole in it and I didn't want to toss it out. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take it outside and we're going to use it as a garden hose keeper place to keep your garden hose. You just kind of wind it up and then you can put it into the basket. All the holes in the basket will let it air out and keeps it all together for you, nice and organized. Here's another cool way to use Dollar Tree planters. I'm actually gonna fill this one with some regular sand. Just put a few scoops into your planter. You may already have a planter, you can use those too. And we're just gonna scoop it right into there and then we're gonna use that as a uh, little holder for our garden tools. So it weighs down the planter for us and then every time that you push your garden tools down into the sand, it's actually going to help clean them and sharpen them. So these garden trays at Dollar Tree actually are called planter trolleys and they have little wheels on the bottom to make them portable and movable. So you would usually probably put a plant on there, that way you can move it in and out of the sunshine or move it around your house or outdoors if you wanted to. But here's another idea, it's actually really handy to have it for your outdoor spaces for heavy items to move them around, just like I'm doing here with some soil, some planting, some new flowers outside. Use this to kind of move down our uh, concrete walkway as I scooped the soil into place. 
You can find these little plastic toolboxes in the hardware section of Dollar Tree. And instead of using them for tools, you can take them outside and use them for organizing your seeds for spring and summertime. So as you can see, I have some Dollar Tree seeds here. I love the Dollar Tree carries those as well. And you can actually just use a paper clip. That's what I do to keep them all closed and nice and separated and organized. And then you can just close the lid. It locks down tight so that way everything stays sealed for you until you're ready to bring them out next year. And then this is another solar light idea. This is a decorative one. We're gonna grab some of these children size plastic hangers from Dollar Tree. You always want to test your solar lights before you actually create with them because some of them are just duds or they do have batteries in there. So sometimes they just need a battery replaced. So we're gonna take this apart. We're gonna remove the stake out of the bottom and then we're gonna need four of these hangers. We're gonna work with two at a time. So as you can see, I flipped one upside down. We have the curved part of the hangers touching on the left side. Do the same thing with the right side. These are the, gonna be the wings of our butterfly. To secure everything, grab some of these cable ties from Dollar Tree or zip ties and then we are going to just zip tie these together in all the places where they connect. Another tip here is don't fully tighten your zip ties until you get everything together. That way you have a little bit of wiggle room and adjustment space if things need to be moved around a little bit before we finalize it. And then once everything is tightened up, you can take some wire cutters and just trim off those tails. Repeat that for the other side. And then we're going to connect this all together to look like a beautiful butterfly that's going to light up. Now you can leave this as is if you want, or you can get creative, take this outside, give it a couple coats of spray paint. I decided to have some fun with mine and give it kind of a tie dye look, something a little bit more natural, I guess, that a butterfly would look like. So I will link all the paint colors that I'm using down in the description box below for you, along with the other supplies that you'll see throughout this video to make it easy to find if you are wanting to recreate any of these projects. So this was just a fun creative process. Once it's dry, you can take it back inside and add your solar light back to the top. We didn't want to paint that and cover up the pretty light that would be showing through. And then to add these to wherever you're wanting to add them, I just grabbed some of these clear command style hooks from Dollar Tree and took it out to our garden gate and added it on there. Kind of a fun way to mark where the entrance and the exit is and it makes it look pretty and decorative too. You are absolutely gonna love this project. I do, it really is so good. We're gonna make a garden chandelier out of one of these wire hanging baskets from Dollar Tree. We're gonna start by removing the chain off of the top. So they have little hooks on them. You pinch them and then they come off the wire hoops on the basket, but don't throw them away. We're gonna be reusing these here in just a minute. So hang tight with those. We're gonna flip this basket right side up and we're gonna take some of these beautiful hanging crystals that I found on Amazon. As I said, I will link these down below for you. Super easy to find. And we're gonna take those prisms that have wire hooks on them and put them around each one of those wires on the basket. A pair of pliers comes in handy here so we can pinch them and crimp them down so they don't come flying off our basket. Do that one prism on each one of those wires. 
Now we're gonna take our basket and turn it upside down. Yes, we're gonna hang it upside down. It's gonna make sense here in just a second. We're gonna take back out our chains that we removed in the first step here. And we're actually going to start adding them back around evenly spaced on the bottom of this basket around that circle. That is how this is gonna hang for us, super easy. And then we're gonna light it up with a solar light. So definitely wanna test your light, always make sure they work first before we get through our project. And it did kind of slide down through, it's pretty small, but to remedy that, take a little bit of floral wire and add it around in a triangle shape in that circle. It's going to shorten up the space so that our solar light can sit right down the center. This is another one I love so much because it's really pretty during the daytime. Obviously the sun bouncing off the prisms makes for some little glistening effects and some rainbows. I love that, but at nighttime when it gets dark, that light comes on and the solar light is actually gonna help bounce some light off those pretty prisms as well. This video doesn't do it justice. It looks so pretty in person still even at nighttime. For this DIY, you're gonna need a pretty large planter. And luckily the Dollar Tree Plus section has some of those. This one's a great one, a 14 inch size for only $3. Such a great deal. We are actually going to paint this black or this is an oil rub bronze color to give it a little bit more of a high end look. You can absolutely keep it the terracotta plastic color if you want. Just get creative here. Whatever is gonna match your patio space or your backyard or wherever you're gonna be putting this, we're actually gonna turn this into a little garden planter with a updated look and a little bit of a hack in there too. So we're gonna fill some of this larger planter up with some pool noodles. So I love that Dollar Tree also carries these quote unquote pool noodle knives. From what you guys have told me, it's actually more like a salad knife, which works too. So if you have a salad knife, grab that out regular knife works as well but we're just cutting up some of these pool noodles into smaller sections and then throwing them into the bottom of our planter so now we can add some of our soil on top and it saves us some money so we don't have to put all soil down into our bucket and then you can add your plant so this is a blackberry plant Unfortunately, it did not survive and it didn't make any blackberries for me last year. So I'll have to try something else this year, but it does vine out. So I wanted to add a little hack in here that would be a tip and trick for you too. So we're gonna make a little cage or trellis using some of these large bamboo barbecue skewers that are from Dollar Tree too. So what I did is I just took six of these skewers and evenly spaced them out into the soil around the outside edge of the pot. Now we're gonna take the tops of all those skewers, grab them all together at the top and take a rubber band, wrap it around all of those bamboo skewers so they all stay together. Now this is just kind of a temporary hold. We are actually going to also add some jute string around this and that is going to hold up through the elements, through the rain, through the sun and rubber would probably just dry rot and pop off and then we would lose our trellis. So if you add some jute, that will remedy that and you just cut off any excess and we have a nice easy trellis gable cage for our vining plant to grow on. I love these pretty garden gazing balls. They have such fun colors. So we're gonna kind of recreate our own using a glass bubble vase from Dollar Tree, along with a little planter. And we're gonna use some alcohol ink to add that color. So this is another item that I will link down below for you. If you haven't used alcohol ink before, it is so fun. You can also use a can of air, which sometimes you can find at Dollar Tree. So look there, of course, Walmart has it. Um, or you can just use a straw and blow air through it and that works as well. So with this alcohol ink, you just put a few little drops into the inside of the glass vase here and there, kind of roll it around. It's going to help to spread out that ink. And then you're going to come in with your um, air or your straw and you can blow that color around and it's also going to slowly dry the ink. It dries really, really quickly. So keep that in mind as you're working, you're going to want to work quickly.
So I decided to use three different colors here. You can do all one color if you want, you can do two colors if you want, but I highly recommend doing no more than three just because all those colors start to mix and then you'll just get brown, which if you want brown, then that's, that's a, the way to do it. Um, but if you stick with three, you'll still get a nice variety and spacing of the colors. So you just kind of build on it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There's just different ways to do it. And you can do all one color first and then add in the next color, or you can work all three colors at the same time. Totally up to you, but this is what I got at the end when I was happy with it. And then we're gonna turn this into a gazing ball. It needed a little stand, so I just picked up a small flower pot from Dollar Tree. And we are gonna add some fairy lights down in there to light it up. So this is really pretty. You could put this inside, which is a little bit more safe, I think, than putting glass outside. Um, so here's what it looks like during the day, but it looks pretty at night as well. And here's another idea for you. If you want to put this outside, grab another one of those solar lights. Again, test it, make sure it works before then just using it on the inside of this glass face and putting it down into the planter. And now we're gonna make another pretty addition to your garden using one of these wagon wheel style wreath bases from Dollar Tree. Just cut off the tag and then grab out some glass beads. I found these on Amazon. I'll link them down below for you. I found a nice variety. And we're gonna need some floral wire to string all these beads up and then attach it onto our wreath. Loving all the color already. We did leave a pretty good long tail at the end, so we can actually take that tail and attach it onto the outside edge of the wreath, which is gonna get us started. So I wanted to just have this kind of a spiral effect from the outside kind of spiraling into the center. So I took little pieces of that floral wire and just as I went around in a circle, tacked it on to the little spokes of the wheel until I got to the end and had a nice spiral effect. Then to hang this, I just grabbed one of these key rings that I had and just stuck that onto the top of the wreath. So we can take this outside and now hang it up in our garden. It's so actually added this to one of the trees outside, but look at this beautiful sunshine coming down and it will actually bounce off the colored glass of our beads and give our garden a little bit of whimsy. We're gonna make our own garden style citronella candle using some terracotta pots and these white jar candles from Dollar Tree. One candle is gonna be enough to fill one three and a half inch terracotta pot. And then you're gonna need some kind of wick. So I'm using some wood wicks here. I love these. They have a nice metal base that holds them down in the bottom of the pots for us. I will link those down below for you too. You can find them on Amazon. And we do need to cover up the hole in the bottom of these terracotta pots. So I used a couple pieces of masking tape. You could use duct tape, whatever you have on hand. Add a little bit of super glue to the bottom of the metal, which is gonna hold this down and cover up the hole in the terracotta terracotta pot. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we need to melt down our candle wax. So we're gonna turn our flame on our stove down to medium heat. Fill your pot up about a little more than halfway with hot water, and then put your candles down into the hot water and bring it all up to temperature and to a boil so that your wax kind of melts and comes up to temperature all together. So this is after about 15 minutes, you can see that wax will melt down for you and then you need to pull out the wick. So you can use these wicks, save them, reuse them, use them for this project if you want. Totally up to you because they are reusable. But I'm gonna take these out and set them aside so we can use the wax to fill our terracotta pots. You definitely wanna make sure you have something covering your hands to protect them. This is going to be super hot. Um, and as you can see, one glass jar filled up one of those terracotta pots and you can now keep your glass container and reuse it for another project. Then we're gonna add some essential oils into these terracotta pots and into the wax. You can use citronella, lemon, peppermint, lime, whatever kind of combination you want. They all smell really, really good. Um, it's just kind of up to you. They all seem to keep the bugs away pretty nicely. So we're gonna add several drops into that wax, kind of stir it around a little bit, incorporate it all into the wax and let them set up before you can use them. Once that wax has hardened, you can come in with your scissors and just cut the wicks down so they aren't too tall. It doesn't hurt to put a little terracotta pot tray under these too. You can use these indoors or outdoors. Highly recommend probably using them outdoors to keep the bugs away, but you can also use these indoors with other essential oils. This is probably the absolute cutest project of the whole video. We're gonna turn some items into a garden turtle. So the tray at the bottom, I got at the craft store and then the little mini pots are from Dollar Tree and this big wood knob is from Hobby Lobby. So a very affordable craft, you're just gonna need some items outside of a Dollar Tree supply list. And you're also gonna need some paint. I highly recommend using some outdoor acrylic paint. I got this off Amazon, I'll link it down below for you. It will just withstand and withhold through the different elements outdoors like the sun and the rain we're gonna grab two different colors of green for this project we're making a turtle but if you want a colorful turtle go for it we're gonna take this darker green color and give everything a good coat of that and then let it sit and dry now for the really creative part we need to make some hexagons on the back of this turtle's back which is that tray and saucer we turned upside down and painted green it's kind of the soccer ball effect here starting in the center and then using that lighter green paint we're going to kind of make this look like tiles that you would put in your bathroom you're going to separate them leaving a little bit of that darker green paint in between and then working your way down the sides of the turtle shell Here's what it looks like after the first coat. It's cute, you can totally leave it like that if you want it. Or you can come back in and add a second coat which will give it more of a clean look. So depending on if you want that rustic look or that more clean look, totally up to you. It doesn't really take too much longer to do a second coat since you've already done all the work creating the pattern. Now we have all our pieces painted, we can put it together. I like using this total tape. It's a double-sided permanent adhesive that I'll link down below for you. It is super strong, great for outdoors, and it is mess-free, which I really love too. So we're taking those mini terracotta pots and putting them on the bottom, our little feet to our turtle, and then of course that wood piece that's now green. We are gonna give this guy a little face with some more paint. Oh my goodness, he is just turning out so cute. You add some adhesive onto the bottom of that knob, add his head onto the backside of the turtle shell and look how adorable he is. Our little buddy, cute little guy in our garden that you can leave by himself. Or he also makes a little cute uh, potted plant or flower tray too. Now we're gonna make a little lantern for our garden. 
the potted plant is from the craft store so is the little tray but the glass vase is actually from Dollar Tree we're stuffing the bottom of our bigger planter with some paper just so we take up some space in there and adding some river rocks from Dollar Tree putting the tray on top and then the vase on top of that with some rocks inside there to put it down to hold it down you add a candle in there and you have an instant garden lantern so easy and so pretty too Now, how about some outdoor organizations? So you probably think of using these indoors, these over the door hooks, but they are heavy duty powder coated. So you can actually use these outdoors too. And they will hold up to the high heat, the low heat, whatever. Um, but you can just take this and we had this little outdoor cabinet. So I hung it over the door here. And then it's a great place to now be able to hang our wet towels or bathing suits things that get wet while we're outside playing. Dollar Tree also carries some great mesh drawstring bags that are great for outdoors when you're messing with things that are wet, like toys or garden tools. So that way you can still keep everything nice and organized inside the bag, but you can hang it up to dry. And since it's mesh, all the wind and the air will go through it and dry your items for you. These water guns are a great example of that. Just pop up in your bag, throw all of those toys that get wet in there, and then you can actually tote them around easy if you're gonna be taking them to the pool, to the beach with you, and then an easy way to carry them back and forth. And then again, to bring back in the over the door hook from earlier, you can actually hang this bag on the hook outside so all your items can dry. This is probably the weirdest item that you're going to see in this video. It is a dog collar, but you may have not thought of this as an organization tool, but I have a couple ideas for you. So you can actually take these collars and wrap them around your extension cords, your hoses, your garden hoses and things like that to keep them all bundled up and together for you. You can also use these and put them over a railing and it will hold it up for you, or you can also use the metal loop that's on these dog collars and hang them from a wall on a nail or a hook to keep everything organized. This is an easy way to turn a regular plastic planter into one that is a hanging basket. Super fun to do. You're going to need a hot glue gun. You're going to turn it on. You want a high heat one because we're going to melt the metal from the hot glue gun through the plastic on the planter. So as you can see, I made one hole and then next to it, a few inches over, made a second hole, turned it to the back side, and repeated this so we have two holes on each side. If you have some of that plastic kind of melted and closed up the holes, take some needle nose pliers and kind of route it out so that way it opens the hole back up. To hang this, you're going to need some string or I'm using some four ply jute here that I get very cheaply at Walmart. I'll link it down below for you. We're going to take a big long length of this jute and just string it from the front to the inside of our planter. Do the same thing with the other hole. So you're going to string it from the outside to the inside. And then you're gonna pull those tails tight so we don't have a loop on the outside. And we're gonna repeat that process on the, ins on the other side so we have four little tails coming through the center. Then all you have to do is grab all of those four tails together and create a knot at the end, which is what is going to allow us to now turn our planter into a hanging planter. Thank you. 
this is a wood decorative window that we've had for years that's been on our back patio. We're going to turn it into one that has a little bit more functionality with the help of these L brackets that you can get from Dollar Tree. I know I'm going to be doing a video hacking these L brackets very soon. So make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you get notified as soon as this video goes live because some, some really great ideas on how you can use these. We're going to be creating a shelf for this project though. So I just added one to each side of this wood faux window and then we're going to add a piece of wood to the top of this to turn it into a shelf. I definitely want to make sure that I waterproof this since it was going to be outside. So I'm using a clear matte polyacrylic. I'll link it down below for you. You can find it at the craft store, Walmart, probably Amazon too. And you're just going to take that and give your wood a couple coats of this to waterproof it and seal it all up. Once it's dry, we're going to take it back out to our hooks and we're going to apply it onto the top here. Now there's no holes in this box, this back side. So I'm using a construction adhesive here, just adding a bead of that onto each side. And then I'm going to set the wood right on top. This is an easy peasy way to add some storage and functionality outside. And isn't this cute? This little succulent planter is an antique toolbox that you'll see a little bit later in this video whenever I get to the thrift flip and flea market hacks. But you can see here more functionality with these hooks is you can actually add those planters on there, hanging planters on there. You can add your um, garden tools on there. We got some stuff off of my planting bench there added just more storage and organization. Super easy with those Dollar Tree L brackets. So we're going to add even more storage to this unit with another Dollar Tree find. So this is a little hook system. Love these things. $1.25. You can get them in white or black. I was going to hang it right here at the bottom of this window. However, you can see there just wasn't a whole lot of room between the top of my table and the window to hang things. So instead of doing that, I actually bent all the little hooks up and we're going to hang this underneath the shelf instead. To bend those hooks, I'm just using some pliers here. It's not super thick, heavy metal wire. So it does take a little bit of muscle, but not too much. And you can kind of bend and flex them so they look straight. Just do that to each one of those hooks. So here's once all of those hooks were bent over, you can see I left a little bit of a space so I'm still able to get a string or tool up into that hook for it to hang. And you can see on this unit as well, there's two little holes, one on each end. That's where we're gonna put some screws and attach it up underneath the shelf. such an easy way to add some additional hanging storage and you don't necessarily have to do this just outside. I think this would be a great idea to do in an office, maybe underneath some cabinets or in your kitchen to add more hanging space for coffee mugs or your kitchen utensils to get things up off your workspace for more room. These white buckets, you can also find a Dollar Tree in their organization section, and they come as a set of three. So only $1.25 for three buckets is a great value. And you can actually just hang these onto those hooks and you kind of create a little bucket of storage for little items. This would be great in a craft room, in a garage, wherever you need that extra storage space.
These are the cutest little stools in the Dollar Tree Plus section. They're only $5 each, so a really great deal on these. And you can use these outdoors, which I love. We're gonna make it even more usable outdoors with the help of a round paver. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna set our little table down next to our couch or our chair, and then you put your round paver right on top. It's heavy enough to kind of stay in place. Or you can add some construction adhesive on there too to keep it in place, and then it's really not gonna come off. But it's gonna add enough heaviness to this table that your table's not gonna go flying away in the wind. Obviously, I kind of featured our cute little dog, Honey, on there too. She loves being outside in the sunshine. And another idea too is if you're going to be using this as a little side table to put food or drinks, a little bit of disinfectant doesn't hurt either. So like I said, a little bit of liquid nails would go a long way to hold this all together, but I had to feature this sweet little honey bun right here. She has grown so much. This was last summer. She's almost two now, but oh my goodness, I miss those puppy days, but she's a great dog. Um, anyway, onto this project. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. This is a cute way to display your plants, or you can use it, like I said, as a side table and use it for drinks and snacks. And I definitely think $7 is a great deal to create your own outdoor side table that is gonna hold up and withstand all the outside elements and weather and my sweet little doggy. oh my goodness, oh my goodness, love her. For this project, we're gonna take a bench and upgrade it for the outdoors. So this bench, I did a full tutorial on previously, and I'll link that video down in the description box below for you. This is a great beginner-friendly wood project. We actually created eight of these wood benches for our outdoor wedding. So we needed an easy project that was gonna go quickly, because obviously we had to whip several of these out, but just to give you kind of a rundown, it's a two by 12 for the top, and then two by fours, created into a rectangle to make the legs, and then we just screwed the legs into the top, stained it, and this was beautiful, perfect for our small outdoor wedding, and we gave each one of our guests one of those benches, or each of the families that came to our wedding, one of those benches as a keepsake and memory of our special day. After the wedding, I painted, brought it home, painted the bottom white, as you can see here, and then, decided I wanted this outside. So I sealed it up really, really well with some um, polycrylic. And then I added some of these square pavers to the top to weight it down, protect it a little bit more, make it more outdoor friendly. And one of the things I noticed about these pavers is that they are kind of rough, pointy edges. So this is a Dollar Tree sanding stone. I just took that and ran it over all the edges as well as all of the corners to make sure it was sanded, rounded over, smooth, and comfortable to then sit on. So this was just a fun and easy way to really create some additional outdoor seating for us. And there's little honey again. Um, I had planted some flowers and she got into the flower pots and they turned into toys for her. So she actually loves those and those orange cones that you get from Dollar Tree <laughs> in the kids section. Um, or sometimes they're in like the hardware section. And yeah, they're plastic and she just likes us to throw them and her to chase them and to chew on them. So puppy, puppy life, right? But here is the bench kind of styled and updated a little bit. And I definitely think Honey approves. Now these are called crescent pavers and we're going to take that round paver that we use the same one from the table that we made earlier or the stool that we turned into a side table earlier and just a cute idea for this is take those crescent pavers and put it around it and you actually create a cute little flower. This would be really pretty if you dug that shape into the ground and laid it so it looks like a little stepping stone. You could paint these too. So lots of ideas for this. Get creative. Let me know down in the comments below how you would paint yours. And then speaking of painting, we're gonna paint this crescent into a ladybug. My daughter would absolutely not approve of this. She's terrified of ladybugs, but this is gonna be a super cute ladybug. We're gonna pull back out our patio paint that I linked down below for you, which is great to use outdoors as it's kind of like 
an all-in-one sealer paint in one. So we're taking a foam paintbrush here and we're gonna paint this whole paver red. Next, we're gonna take our black paint and make our ladybug's head. We're also gonna to need to make his little wings and also some polka dots. Now we're gonna take some white patio paint and add in some of the details. So the little antenna and his face. So my daughter may not like real ladybugs, but I definitely think she would like this one. It is so stinking cute. A really fun project to do and even one that you could do with kiddos and let them get creative with the paint. So speaking of that, I let my son pick whatever he wanted to do with his paver and he decided he was going to turn his into a watermelon. So I decided to turn a tutorial into it. So this is all him and his design. We took that um, paver and he painted green paint all around the outside edge. Then for the watermelon part, we're gonna use a dark pink and a light pink. So he actually mixed those two colors together and got this medium pink color and painted the front edge and then the inside of the green part. Nice little chomp out of the watermelon the front and does kind of look like a Pac-Man, doesn't it? So that'd be a cute way to paint these two. Then he took a lighter green paint and made little stripes around the outside. And then next took some black paint and a teeny tiny paintbrush and made little dashes and lines for the watermelon seeds. Totally all his doing and I thought he did such an amazing job. He's so creative and I love that about him. He also really got into gardening last year. So we got him this um, tower garden thing. I don't even know what it's necessarily called, but he put that outside of his little garden, but look how cute it is even mixed in with some flowers, fun little surprises here and there that you can add to your garden. So I hope you can find these crescent pavers and get creative with them. Bricks are another fun thing to add to your outdoor space or garden, and you can find these year round, and they're only 83 cents at my hardware store, so really, really affordable. I actually have several different ideas to share with you using these bricks, and first up, we're gonna make a cute little lantern using some Dollar Tree tea lights. All you have to do is tilt up your brick so it is on the shorter side standing up and then you're going to take your tea lights three of them since we have three holes and just the, insert them into the holes and we have a nice weighted down lighted contemporary looking lantern for outside so these dollar tree candles do have a switch on the bottom so you have to turn them on and off individually but you can also head over to amazon and they have tea lights that are remote controlled which are actually so handy and we'll save you a little bit of time. So I'll link those down below for you too. Next idea, we're gonna make a centerpiece using a metal tray from Dollar Tree. We're gonna take that tray outside and spray paint it with some black matte spray paint. I will link the spray paint down below for you. Just hit it with a couple coats of that black paint. All right, now to turn it into a centerpiece, once it's dry, you're gonna take your brick and just set it right down in the center with the holes facing up. We're gonna take some of this sand and we're gonna fill the, the holes with it, all three of them. You can find sand at Dollar Tree, so keep an eye out for that. And then we're also going to use some candles from Dollar Tree. You can find these six packs of these smaller taper candles or you can use battery powered taper candles too if you want these are from amazon i'll link them down below for you you know me trying to make it easy for you and all you have to do is take this outside and then stick your candles down into the sand and we have a cute little candle holder
Another idea is to turn this into a planter. So same idea, but instead of candles, we're gonna insert some succulents. These are plastic ones from Dollar Tree, but you could use live air plants if you wanted to. Just put the right soil in there and make sure to water them every once in a while. And then did you know you can actually put decals onto these pavers? So I headed in to my Cricut Design Space, found a design and decided to customize it and turn it into one that, this is obviously not our address, but you would wanna personalize it with your name and address on it, or you could put a little message or just welcome or make ones for different holidays and seasons that you could change out. But I just printed this on some, or cut this out with some matte black vinyl that I will link below for you. And I get questions all the time about the transfer tape that I use. So I'll also link that down below for you too. We are literally just gonna apply this vinyl decal onto the paver like we would any other decal lining it up, centering it, and then pressing it down. I did, however, make sure to dust off and get all the dirt and any kind of little rocks or whatever out of the pits of this paver before applying the decal, making sure it's good and clean and dust free. And that way we got a nice clean um, adhesion of our decal onto the paver. So this is pretty cool because the decal or the vinyl that I use is used, is good for outdoors. It's commercial grade, so it's gonna hold up in the weather for us. So this is an idea I did a long time ago, but it was so cute I wanted to show you again. I took some rectangle pavers and used some acrylic paint and just painted some little white dashes down the center to make a little uh, roadway for my son to play with his cars on. So these are fun because they're repositionable so you can change your roadway up. This was a cute little idea I did for him to play outside, made a little firehouse for him, and he just absolutely loved this. Now let's do some outdoor thrift flips. I found this glass milk bottle filled with some corks in there at the thrift store for only $2.79. I thought it was a pretty good deal to get pretty much two in one. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the corks out of this bottle and we're gonna use them to create some garden markers. Super duper easy and inexpensive. So I found the corks that didn't have a bunch of writing down the side and then took a Sharpie marker and added words onto them that lined up and corresponded with the different plants that we have in our garden. Next, we're gonna take some of these bamboo skewers from Dollar Tree. These are the shorter ones. They come in a pack of 100, so you get a ton of them. And we're gonna take the pointy in and we're actually gonna push it down into the cork so they get stuck in there and make us a nice little stand for us to push these down into the dirt. You can also take some tin snips, which I'll link down below for you. Y'all should have these by now. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you know I am obsessed with my tin snips. So good for crafting and cutting through uh, thin wood like these bamboo skewers. So we're just cutting those down and uh, we're gonna insert them into our soil out in the garden. So this is my son's garden that I was talking about earlier. We are so excited to get this planted again this year. This was year number one with it and it did pretty good. Um, it's two-sided, which I really, really like. So we were able to plant a ton of plants in this wood double-sided garden. I'll link it down below for you too, but these little markers worked perfectly in there. Now let's work on this glass milk bottle. We're gonna turn it into an actual tiki torch. So grabbing some of these river rocks from Dollar Tree, we're gonna put it into the bottom of this glass milk bottle to help weigh it down. Now we need to add our tiki torch fuel. Definitely helps to have a funnel for this. Just fill it, not quite up all the way. I would say probably three quarters of the way, maybe a little more. 
Then of course our tiki torch needs a wick so i grabbed some of those from the store along with a washer that was the same size as the top of the bottle and a copper coupling reducer we're going to slide that onto the wick and that is going to then sit down into the washer and then sit down into the tiki torch fuel i will have all those supplies linked down in the description box below for you go ahead put your wick into the milk bottle and you can go ahead and light it they do make longer wicks um, but my store didn't have any I did find some on Amazon though so I will link those down below for you as well just be very careful with this obviously it is an open flame so you want to keep kids and pets away from this but this thing since there was so much tiki torch fuel in there lasted all summer long for us and there was still even some left in the bottom so if you're outside a lot this is a great way to keep the bugs away give you a little bit of light and ambiance and something you won't have to refill over and over again. Another thrift store find were these light hangers and they were only $3 for this big set. And I thought this would be pretty to use outside. So we're gonna make a little chandelier of tea lights with these. So I just kind of organized them. They were in different lengths and we are going to start adding these onto one of these wreath rings from dollar tree i'm going to be using the largest size but it comes in a set of three which is really cool so now i have two more wreaths that i can set aside and use later on for another project taking that wreath ring outside we're going to turn it black with some matte black spray paint So you saw this earlier, this is the wire hanging basket from Dollar Tree. We're actually just going to use the chain and the hook off of this. So go ahead and unclip those from the basket, save the basket for another project. We're just gonna need the chain for this. Then we're going to add that chain evenly spaced out around the ring. Just hook them on there. A little bit of adhesive or tape will hold them in place so they don't start moving around on you like mine did there. And then I just hung it up from the ceiling under our porch. Now for the light part, I actually went on to Amazon. I think I mentioned this earlier that you can find tea lights on there that are battery operated. So this chandelier had a lot of lights to it and I thought it was gonna be such a pain to take each tea light off and turn them on individually, which you kind of have to do whenever you start this, you turn them on. Um, but then you have a remote that will turn them back off for you. So that's pretty cool. It's going to save you a lot of time and you can just kind of walk out on your porch, hit a button and all those lights will come on and off for you. Now for the hangers that we found at the thrift store, I'm going to add my tea lights into them and start evenly spacing them out and hang them on that wreath that is hanging from the ceiling. So here's what it looks like, pretty simple. I think this would be pretty if you put some greenery around the hoop too, maybe a vine or something to give it some color. Even some flowers would be pretty. Kept it pretty minimalist though. But here's what it looks like when you hit the button and all those lights come on at the same time. Just gives you a nice little glow from overhead. Now let's head to the flea market. I love the flea market. If you do too, hit the thumbs up button. This booth had so many awesome items and a really great prices too. So I actually kind of grabbed a ton of stuff from this one, but I only spent like 40 or $45, which was amazing. So I'll show you my haul, but for the most part, I showed you earlier this antique toolbox. Can you believe it was only $5? I didn't touch it. I didn't even clean it. I just liked exactly how it looked it was going to go outside anyway and get dirty so we are actually going to just use this as a pretty planter so we're going to add some rock to the bottom of this and some soil on top and add some pretty succulents and make a very unique and outdoorsy planter
For the top, I just took some river rocks from Dollar Tree and sprinkled them around into the soil. Just gave it a little bit more of a organic look. Does this guy look familiar at all? He's actually a Dollar Tree gnome that I just spray painted with a green color. He kind of blends in and I just think he's cute. A fun little addition to this inexpensive and primitive planter. The next flea market find were these cool baskets. There was a ton of them. I don't even know what they are. If you know, let me know down in the comments below, but I thought I would turn mine into more of a wall shelf. So I measured out the width of the inside and the outside of the basket, as well as the depth. And we're gonna make some wood shelves that will slide in there and create a shelf. So a one by three seemed to be the right depth for these shelves. So I cut it down to size. I cut it the longest length measurement and then kind of air fit to make sure it was gonna work out right, tapered the edges in so that way it would slide in and be a custom fit within the shelf. Once I knew those were gonna fit in there really well, I did two of those the same size and then sanded them down. And now to hang them, we're gonna be using some cup hooks and it's actually going to just sit right down onto the wires and that is gonna just keep this all together for us. So I took those little bitty cup hooks, opened up one of the edges so I had enough room that I could slide it onto the wires, you can see here, and then drilled in some pilot holes on the sides of the shelves, and then we're going to insert those cup hooks. See these just twist right into those holes and then magically once we get those positioned correctly we will just sit those right over each one of those wires on each side. So again, I'm really not sure what those wire baskets were used for, but I think it turned into a pretty cute shelf to display some of our home decor. The same booth also had a ton of wood ladders and can you believe they were only $5 each. Of course I had to find one of those that was unique and grab that one to bring home. We're going to turn this into a decorative display that can be used inside. First things first, we got to clean this up. So I took some sandpaper to it first to make sure to get any of the big splinters off of it, smooth it down, took some disinfectant to it so it was nice and clean. And then we can start decorating it. I'm just going to be using some regular jute to tie things on. 
I am doing this for inside, but you could take this and use this outside. I think it'd be great next to a front door. Instead of like a welcome sign, you could tie a welcome sign onto this and put some live plants and buckets and hang those on there. Totally up to you. We're gonna start with the top here, just tying some string on and then hanging a sign. All right, for this tip, I'm gonna be sharing this for fall, which is with mums, but you can do this during the spring and summertime with your ferns as well. So you're gonna take a bucket, fill it up with water. You can add some fertilizer in there too, which will um, give it even more nutrients as you're doing this. But you're gonna take your planter, your mums, your ferns, and you're gonna stick it down into the bucket of water and just push it down until the planter is fully under the water. Leave it there for a few minutes, maybe five minutes or so until everything is good and hydrated. And then you can take it out and put it where you want it. For ferns, you, you're gonna wanna put it in the shade or partial shade. And one more thrift store flip is this galvanized bucket that I found for only $2. I thought this would be great for outdoor use. So I took it home and we are gonna dress it up a little bit for fall, but this also works for springtime too. So I'm just gonna use some Dollar Tree burlap ribbon and put it around this bucket obviously taking the price tag off and dressing it up Then we're gonna add some drainage holes. So just took a drill and drilled a few holes in the bottom of this bucket before then adding in my flowers, which in this case was mums for the fall. But obviously you can do this with your ferns. You can do this with potted flowers, whatever you have on hand to give your home a little bit more of a upgrade without breaking the bank and spending money on expensive planters and honey must've been a little thirsty. <laughs> If you made it to the end of this video, hit that thumbs up button and a big high fives to you. I'll have another outdoor affordable DIY video popping up on your screen. Go ahead, click over and I'll see you over there next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a creative day.